Right, question 6 from the 2000 first paper. What range of values of k makes this a circle? Well, the thing is, just because you throw numbers into an equation with x squares and y squares and x's and y's doesn't make it a circle. Just the same as if you throw three numbers down, it won't make it a triangle. If I throw in 3, 4 and 10, that won't make a triangle. The line of 10, if I do a 3 and a 4, they can't possibly meet. It's the same here. One thing to always check though is, make sure these coefficients are the same. That it's just 1, 1 or even 2, 2. It could be 2, 2 because everything was doubled to avoid fractions. Because you won't be able to ident <coughs> identify the centre unless they both say 1, 1. Just like identifying the equation, <coughs> the gradient of a line. You won't get the gradient unless it goes y equals. So now you have 2y equals. Well it does go 1, 1, so that's fine. If it was 2 and 1 it would be a circle at all. It would be an ellipse, so you could forget that. So for this one, <coughs> I can identify the centre readily, because it'll just be negative the half of that, and negative the half of that, and then from that I can get the radius, because that'll be the square root of those things squared, take away the number at the end, so it's take away this part, so that's take away a negative k minus a 2, tidy that lot up, 4 and 1, so that's 5k squared plus k plus 2, so that's a b quadratic. So that means you're going to say the circle will exist so long as that thing inside the square root is neither zero, because there wouldn't be a circle, which would be a point, nor negative. So as that thing inside the square root has to be greater than zero. So you've got a quadratic in equation. Now normally you would just solve that, you would factorise it and consider its graph. It's a positive quadratic. So it's going to look in this direction, positive at both ends. And when you find where it cuts the axis, you can tell which parts are above and which parts are below. So normally you'd expect that to be regions, values of k outside of two values, those two values being the, the zeros. But quickly examining that, you realise the discriminant of that must be negative. Because b squared is a small square. And since it is positive, I'm taking away a much larger number. If I've got a small inside and a big outside and they're all positives, it must be a negative discriminant. That simply means that this graph sits above the x-axis, which means it's true for all values of k. There'll be no value of k you could put in there that would get that to give you a negative answer. So which way to show that? Well, you can show that by the discriminant, I suppose, by stating it formally, or you could complete the square. I'll do it by the discriminant first of all. So I'll work out for that. I'll work out the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac would be 1 squared minus 4 times 5 times 2. That's 1 minus 40, so that's negative 39. Negative 39 means it's never equal to 0. That means that 5k squared plus k plus 2 is never equal to 0. <coughs> which means that it's always above, it's always positive. Which means 5k squared plus k plus 2 is greater than 0 for all k, for all values of k. So how would you express that answer? What's the range of k? Well, the range of k would be this. You're looking for k such that k can be anything. k can be any real number. k such that k can be any real numbers, or you could just write in words all values of k. The other way, when it's an absolute <coughs> like that, that you could have shown it apart from the discriminant would have been by completing the square. You could have completed the square of this and shown that that was always positive. And since it's always positive, it means it's a circle for all values of k. Well, I'll put that down, if I considered that. So you would take, but you could only complete the square when you were looking for things that were always positive or always negative. So take out the five, unfortunately leaving that as a fifth of k, leaving the two on its own. Complete that part, so that'd be k plus a half of that, k plus a tenth thereby adding in an extra square of the last, adding in an extra hundredth. So take away five of those hundredths, plus two. So you've got five times k plus a tenth squared, that's a twentieth, so plus one and nineteen twentieths. And then you can say that's obviously greater than zero. Well, in fact, it's greater than or equal to one and nine twentieths for all, if I don't want to use that symbol, for all values of k. So you could do it either way. You can complete the square to show it's always positive, or you could consider the graph and show that it's always positive, so it's true for all values of k. Right, so question B9. Evaluate 
this sum involving logs. Well, all the logs have got the same base, so you can gather them into a single log. It's simply going to be the single log of, if you're adding them, it's the product of the numbers they're operating on. If you're subtracting them, it's the quotient, the division of them. So it's simply the log of 2 times 50 for that part, divided by 4 for that part. So that's going to be log base 5 of 100 divided by 4, which is 25. And then just from the basic meaning of a log, lo a logarithm is a power. Applying a logarithm to a number extracts the power inside that number, the power of 5. Log base 5 of 25 says, what power of 5 gives you 25? And the answer to that is 2. So the answer to that question is 2. In paper 2, the second question, section A2, as it was called then, a circles question. First part, find the equation of AB, the perpendicular bisector of the line joining PQ. Well, you could ignore the fact that there's a circle there. Its relevance appears later on, so it's just like, what's the equation of a line? I need a point on it, I need its gradient. Well, it's the bisector, so it's halfway between P and Q, and it's perpendicular, so its gradient's then relative. It's the negative of the reciprocal of the gradient of PQ. So first of all, what's the midpoint? I can give it a name or not. We'll just call it mid PQ. So mid PQ is going to be the average of the coordinates, negative 3 plus 1. It's always handy having the numbers to hand. If they're not drawn in the diagram, they're on the paper anyway, draw it out yourself so you don't get them confused, you don't want to make mistakes. Mistake in a number is going to carry all the way through. And 1 plus 9. So average of that and the average of 1 plus 9, which means that the midpoint is going to be negative 1, 5. So that's the midpoint. Next thing I want is I've got the midpoint of PQ, now I want the gradient of PQ. Well, you get that by the difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. <coughs> if the diagram wasn't there, I'd probably write the coordinates to keep myself safe. But the diagram's just here, so it's nice and easy. So 9 take away 1 over 1 take away negative 3. You could spell it out or just put 1 plus 3. So that gives me 8 over 4, which is 2 which means that the perpendicular gradient's going to be negative a half. So those are the two things that I need. A point on it and its gradient. So then I can go ahead and get, it says, what's the equation of AB? So AB, Y minus B is MX minus A. So Y minus the Y coordinate is the gradient, negative a half times x minus the x coordinate, well I just jump in with that, take away negative and put it a plus just now. I can't avoid fractions here so I'll just multiply, so I've got 2y minus 10 is negative x minus 1, which way will I write it? Well I'll certainly take the x over. x plus 2y plus a number equals, or x plus 2y equals, actually I'll just make it equals, equals 9. I'll call that equation 1, because I'll no doubt want to refer to that later. Part B, it says, seize the centre of the circle, Fair enough, passing through P and Q, right, and that. Given that QC is parallel to the y-axis, that's the same as saying that QC is vertical, determine the equation of the circle. Well, that means that straight away you know one of the coordinates of C. If it's vertical, the x-coordinate must be 1. So C, for the point C, you know that x equals 1. So how can you find its y-coordinate? Well, it lies in the line you just got. If x equals 1, then I'm going to substitute x equals 1 in the equation I just had. So I've got 1 plus 2y equals 9, 2y equals 8, so y equals 4, which means c is the point 1, 4. So I know the centre of the circle now. To get the equation of the circle, I just need its radius. <coughs> well, it's luckily just a vertical line. You don't need to use Pythagoras to calculate distances that are either horizontal or vertical. If c is at 4 and Q is at 9, that means that quite simply I can say the radius is going to be 9 take away 4, which is 5 units. Then the equation of the circle. So, the equation of the circle is going to be, do I need to write this down first, because it takes up time, I've done it so I can't complain now, the equation of the circle is going to be x minus the x coordinate, y minus the y coordinate of the centre is the radius squared 25 and it would do just to leave it in that form rather than expanding it all out. 
Now for part C, the tangents at P and Q intersect at T. Well, the tangent at Q is easy, because if that's a vertical line, that's the top of the circle, so its tangent is going to be a horizontal line. And the tangent at P is going to look something like this. Doing the right angles to the radius. And so that's the point T that they're looking for. Well, the first bit just says this. What's the equation of the tangent at Q? Well, that's easy. The tangent at Q is going to be horizontal. So, at Q, the tangent is, I need to write this down because it's only the one mark, isn't it? It's, hori Ooh, it's horizontal. So that means its equation is going to be y equals something. So the equation is y equals 9. Now the next bit isn't worth so many marks. The next bit, it's only two marks, so it must be one mark each. So there's not a lot of marks for this. Now you'd probably not think something along the lines of, ah, right, I want this point of intersection, so substitute your two equations. I've got y equals 9. Find this equation. What's the equation of the tangent to the circle at the point? Negative 3, 1. And then use the centre to get the, the gradient of the radius, to get the gradient of the tangent, to get the equation of the tangent to intersect it. But no, the circle's symmetrical. And those two lines must lie on this axis of symmetry passing between them, if I've drawn it well enough. Which means that the point T is not just the intersection of these two tangents, it's also the intersection of these tangents with the extended diameter, with the axis of symmetry. So that means to find T, I just need to substitute y equals 9, not into that equation, but back into old equation 1 again. So, to get the point T, I'll just say, substitute y equals 9 in equation 1. So equation 1 reads x plus 2 times 9 equals 9. So that's 18, take it away, so x is negative 9. Which means that t is going to the point, negative 9, 9. And that's the answer. Question B11 in the second paper is a logs question. It's one of these experimental data ones. If there's some sort of power relationship between two variables, then the graph of it would be a curve, and you can't tell just by looking at a curve whether it's power 2 or 3 or even 2.5 or whatever it might be. So you plot the log against the log, and hopefully that produces a straight line, which you can then identify accurately, and then work back to the originals. So that's what you've got here. So <coughs> what's been plotted is the log against the log, and the results do in fact make a straight line. That's handy, because I can get that equation exactly. And that's what the first bit says. What is the equation in terms of P and Q? Well, it's a straight line passing through the vertical axis. So I could say this. I'll put inverted commas, first of all. It's in the form of y equals mx plus c. And then just substituting the various parts, where y is p, x is q, c is 1.8, and m is the gradient. Well, I'll need to work that out. So the gradient is going to be the difference up the way. But that's the difference in p values. So it'll be the difference in p over the difference in q. Well, I've got the two distances here, because going up the way, it's going up 1.8, and along the way, it's going 3. So that makes 0 0.6 for the gradient. So 0 0.6q plus 1.8. And that was the first part for two marks. That's the equation in terms of P and Q. Then it tells you that P is actually the log E of the original variable P, and Q is the log E of the original variable Q. So you've got to rewrite this equation in the form of p equals the small p this time. So for part b, I'll just continue. Well, if p is equal to, as it says, I've got this. I've got log e p is 0 0.6 log e q plus, unfortunately, 1.8. Because that's going to stop me gathering that equation up. Because I'd rather have everything in logs. Well, one thing I could do is I could pop that in just now. Tidy that up. Back you go into your box. So that's just a nice log. I've got a log E. I've got a log E. That's a bit of a spoil, that 1.8. I'd rather have that 1.8 as log E of something. But you can do that. If 1.8 is meant to be a log E of something, just call it log E of A, some number, then I can find what that number is. That number would be, to get rid of log base E, there is 
the inverse operation is e to the power, that'll be e to the power 1.8. <coughs> e to the power 1.8, you put into your calculator, and you get 6, more or less, 6.0 something or other. I think for the purpose of this, we're just going to be calling it 6. Which means that instead of 1.8, that can be written as log base e of 6. Now I can gather it all up, because if I've got a log plus a log, then I can multiply the two parts, so that's 6q to the 0 0.6, so log e of p equals that, and then inverse of log both sides, p equals 6q to the 0 0.6, which is what it asked for, because it says, show that p and q satisfy that relationship. Yes, and it does, because that is in the form of p equals a q to the b, and so watch it says state the values of a and b where a equals 6 and b equals 0 0.6. There. Only well, nasty bit was really this wee bit here. Taking this number and making it into a log base e.